Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a thriller drama film. Mom, spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with a teacher named Defki starting the day with a biology class. She begins her classes by showing a shirtless man to all the students. One of Defki's students also happens to be her stepdaughter named Aria. A creepy student named Creep sends a video of his smelly parts to Aria, and she is disgusted by it. Defki notices this and gets pissed off when she also takes a look at the video. Defki angrily takes Creep's phone and throws it away so that he cannot harass anyone anymore. In the night, Defki sits down with her family for dinner. She is with her wealthy husband and biological daughter. Aria also joins the family, but Aria doesn't like Defki because she is only her stepmother and is a strict teacher. Aria asks her father if she can go for a Valentine's Day party with her friends at a farmhouse. Defki gets worried, so she asks Aria about the party, but this pisses her off. Aria angrily snaps at Defki and walks away to her room, much to her father's dismay. Later, Defki manages to convince her husband to let Aria go to the party, and she meets Aria inside her room. She gives her some food to cheer her up, but has to leave after Aria gives no response. The next day, the father gets ready for a trip to New York, and he has an emotional talk with Aria, who reveals that she still cannot accept Defki as her new mother. The father tries to explain to Aria that she has to move on from her birth mother, and then he leaves for his trip. Now Defki gets a visit from some of her older students. They give her some sweets, thanking her for pushing them to pursue their new business. The students also ask about Aria, who is sneakily listening to the conversation. After the students leave, Defki tries to share these sweets with Aria, but she continues to act like a jerk and tells Defki not to go around talking about her to these students. At night, Aria gets glammed up and leaves for the party with her friends, without even acknowledging Defki's concerns. Aria gets drunk with her friends at the raging party, but once again, she catches the eye of Creep, who tells his cousin, bro, about her. Creep gathers some courage and tries to dance with Aria, but he gets pushed away because she's not interested in him. Creep goes crying back to Bro to complain about Aria, so Bro tries to show him how it's done. Bro makes his introduction and tries to get Aria to drink a spike cocktail. However, Aria's friend takes the drink instead, and this pisses off Bro. Aria is not interested in Bro, so he gets humiliated and sent away. Creep laughs at Bro for failing miserably, so he decides to kidnap Aria and teach her a lesson. Aria's driver friend gets a call from his dad, so he has to leave the girls alone. Aria gets a call from Defki, who is worried that she still hasn't come back from the party. Aria reassures Defki that she is leaving now, but as soon as she walks away from the crowd, she gets kidnapped by Bro and his goons, which include the farmhouse guard and a criminal named Crook. The villains shove Aria into Bro's car and drive her around town. During this time, Aria gets assaulted and strangled. After that, she is thrown into a drain next to the road. Defki gets worried because Aria still hasn't come back home and is not responding to any of her calls. With no other option, Defki then visits the farmhouse. She tries to look for Aria at the party, but is unable to find her. Anxious and panicked, Defki goes to the police station for help. However, the cops aren't of any use because they think that Aria is just out to share her hormones with some boys. Defki isn't impressed by their opinion, and a private detective named DK notices her. DK goes to Defki and offers his help, but she ignores him after he offers his business card and drives away. The next day, a jogger and his dog find Aria's body, and he immediately alerts the police. Aria is taken to the hospital. Defki is also informed about that, so she rushes to the hospital and is shocked to see her stepdaughter in such a horrible condition. Defki talks to the doctors and learns that Aria has been brutally abused, causing her to break into tears. All the news channels talk about Aria's case, so a police detective is assigned to solve the crime. Detective makes his introduction to Defki, but she is only concerned about Aria's health. She sits by Aria's side the entire time and does her best to take care of her. But Aria continues to ignore Defki because Creep and Bro were taunting her about her strict stepmother during the assault. The father is informed about what has happened to Aria, so he rushes back from New York. The moment he enters the hospital, Aria becomes responsive to him and starts crying. The couple try to get some information about Aria's attackers, and she eventually reveals the names of the culprits who assaulted her. Detective and his men get to work and arrest each of the culprits one after the other. DK learns about all these developments through the news. Later, an intense courtroom sequence follows, where Bro and his men are prosecuted for their hideous crime. However, it turns out that the villains have already covered their tracks and taken care of the evidence by washing the car that was used to kidnap Aria. 
Bro has also managed to get a highly reputed lawyer to defend him and his men in the courtroom. The lawyer brings up all kinds of excuses to dismiss Aria's case, such as claiming that she was so drunk that her statement could not be deemed reliable. The lawyer even says that Aria's character was loose, and this greatly upsets the father. Things get even worse when the forensic reports come back, and the result is negative because the villains manage to swap the samples by using their money and power. All of these developments lead to a controversial decision that declares Bro and his men to be innocent. The father is unable to accept this judgment, so he angrily punches Crook when he hugs Bro for helping him out. This leads to him getting arrested. Eventually, the father gets bailed out, but Defke insults Detective for doing such a lousy job with his investigation. Suddenly, the couple learns that Aria has locked herself inside her room, so they rush back home and break into the room. Aria is just sitting on the floor, but she starts to panic after seeing Defke, and this breaks her heart. After Aria calms down, the father goes to Defke and says that they must continue to fight for Aria. However, Defke starts to lose hope for Aria's justice because of the flawed courtroom system. The next day, the father suggests going on a holiday to distract Aria from what has happened, but she is not in the mood to go anywhere. When Defke drops her biological daughter off at school, she notices creep over there, so she confronts the principal about it. The principal says he can't do anything about it because Creep has been declared innocent. Defty has had enough of this, so she decides to take matters into her own hands. She follows Creep after he leaves school, and an intense chase scene follows. Defty closes in and is about to bump into Creep, but then she almost gets into an accident with a truck. Defty comes back home and tells her husband that she cannot teach at her school anymore because Creep is allowed to study there. Now that she's out of options, Defke decides to finally take DK's help. She visits DK's office and asks for information on each of Aria's attackers, so he promises to do his best detective work. He starts from the farmhouse guard, who had assisted with the assault. DK reveals that the guard likes to get drunk at a particular bar on Monday nights, so this is the best chance to catch him. Defke is ready to commit a small crime to punish an even larger crime, so she takes the address of the guard and goes to her older students for help. It's a Monday night, and the guard is already drunk with his buddy. Suddenly, he is tempted by a woman's hormone smell and follows her, but it turns out that this woman is Defke's older student in disguise. The guard gets kidnapped by the older students and is given a unique punishment. He wakes up after three days and comes back home to his angry wife. The guard ignores her and goes to the bathroom to relieve himself, only to find that his smelly sausage has been chopped off. Panicked and confused, the guard trips and falls to his death. News spreads about this incident, and everyone gets to know about it. Detective suspects foul play, so he questions the father about the death of the guard. However, the father claims to be innocent, and there is no proof against him, so Detective decides to keep an eye on him for now. Later, DK meets Defke at an art gallery and gives her some more information stored inside a flash drive. They then separate from each other to avoid suspicion. Defke goes home and opens up the files on the flash drive. There, she learns about Bro's fitness lifestyle and how he likes to work out using all kinds of protein supplements. Defke decides to get into action and she gathers a ton of apple seeds before leaving home. It turns out, Detective's assistant is keeping an eye on the father, but he ignores Defke because he thinks she is harmless. Later, Defke breaks into Bro's house and enters the gym section to look for his protein supplements. She finds the whey protein boxes and adds a ton of cyanide, which she had made using the apple seeds. The next day, Bro overdoses on the cyanide in the middle of his workout session. He is sent to the hospital as he is badly paralyzed. Creep learns about this, so he also goes to meet him. Detective and his assistant are already there, and they learn about the cyanide inside the protein boxes. Meanwhile, Defke breaks into Creep's house and plants evidence all over the place, before triggering the fire alarm and escaping. Creep learns about the alarm, so he takes the cops with him to investigate his house. However, Detective finds drugs and tons of apples inside the house, so he suspects Creep to be the one who had poisoned Bro. He also finds research on Creep's laptop that shows cyanide recipes. With all the evidence pointing his way, Creep gets arrested and is taken away. However, Detective also finds Ducky's glasses that she had accidentally left behind. At night, Ducky goes to check up on Aria, but she is still trying to deal with her trauma, and it makes her emotional. The next day, Defke meets Bro at the hospital and mocks him for assaulting Aria. She leaves some apples next to Bro, and it triggers his heart rate. Meanwhile, Aria finally starts talking to her father and asks him if they can go on vacation, so he readily agrees. On the other side, Defke drops her biological daughter off at school and bumps into Detective. He tries to intimidate Defke by showing the glasses he found, but she reveals that she has already gotten new glasses. 
Regardless, Detective warns Devki not to do his work for him, otherwise he will arrest her. Devki ignores him and goes home. She learns that Arya wants to go on vacation, so she tries to confess what she's done. However, her husband is too happy to hear anything else and plans the vacation. Later, Devki meets DK again and discusses her next plan of action, but Detective is spying on them from underneath. He takes DK to the police station, where he tries to threaten DK with violence. But then, his boss shows up and tells him not to illegally harass DK. In the detaining center, Creep gets a visit from Crook and tells him that someone is framing all of them. Crook decides to visit Bro and asks him for a hit regarding who is behind all of this. After a lengthy discussion, the paralyzed Bro is able to reveal that it is Defki who is the mastermind. However, he dies soon after, so Crook decides to get to work. He visits Devki's house, but learns that the family has gone on a vacation. Then he spots DK spying on him, so he follows DK to his house. Crook catches DK in the middle of a phone call to Devki and beats him up. Then he uses DK's phone to learn about Devki's location. DK mocks Crook, but he gets shot immediately and dies on the floor. Elsewhere, Devki and her family have a great time during their vacation, while Detective and his team find DK's body and learn that the CCTV footage has been destroyed. After some investigation, Detective finds a memory card inside DK's glasses that was recording everything DK was seeing. There, Detective learns all about DK's arrangement with Defki and also sees Crook killing DK. Meanwhile, Crook invades the vacation home and takes out the electricity. The father goes to check up on the power, but gets shot by Crook and falls to the ground. Crook goes to attack Aria, but Defki distracts him long enough for Aria to escape into the snowy forest. Crook attacks Devki and brutally strangles her with a plastic bag, seemingly killing her in the process. He then chases after Arya in the snowy forest, but Devki is shown to have survived the choking. She goes looking for Arya, but Crook gets the drop on her and is about to kill her. Luckily, Detective shows up and gets into an intense fight with Crook. He eventually overpowers Crook and is about to arrest him, but Devki points a gun at Crook and wants to kill him. Detective calms her down and reveals that her husband is still alive. However, Detective changes his mind when Devki says that the same thing will just happen again if they try to arrest Crook the legal way. Crook begs for mercy and reveals everything that Devki had done to his other accomplices. Detective finally accepts that he can't either give the family justice in the legal system or protect them from Crook's further retaliation, so he hands Devki his police gun and lets her make the decision. During the confrontation, Arya listens to the conversation in the background. Realizing that Defki managed to single-handedly get her justice, Arya shows herself to her stepmother and calls her mom for the first time. This gives Defki the motivation to shoot Crook, and he falls dead to the ground. The movie ends with Defki and Arya finally united as mother and daughter. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.